So here's our schedule for today. Uh, we're going to do a brief introduction here, and then we're going to talk about the following. social media, So SM, social media, instead of writing that over and over. Uh, sharing, following, comments, post-broadcasting, also known as syndication, content paywalls, tracking, logins, and then social media platforms. About me, as I said, I'm the president of the Beacon Agency. We're a digital marketing, uh, technology, and advertising consulting agency based in Houston. Uh, we work with small business owners all over the country doing all kinds of different things, but our bread and butter is social media and WordPress. Um, we do AdWords, we do technology consulting, we do IT, we do all kinds of things, but basically what we try to do is help small business owners be successful. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me today or after today, there's my email address. You can hit me up on Twitter at TheEdPerry or uh, at LinkedIn at EdTech. Slides are going to be right here. They're there now. So if you want to download a copy of those, there's a PDF there on my site which you, have, uh, you can download and keep. Um, if you are going to do that, I just ask that you give us credit. Um, that's our work, so just let, us, let people know where it came from. That's all we ask. Otherwise, feel free to use it and share it. All right, so let's get started. So why integrate social media with WordPress? So a couple of different reasons. Um, and it kind of depends on your marketing goals. So I'm going to go through kind of practical application, but your marketing goals will kind of be one step back from that, maybe another 30,000 feet zoomed out from there. Um, you might be looking to get more data on the users on your site. So if you're running a membership site, if you're running an e-commerce platform, if you're running any number of different things where you have a lot of users for your site, not just your standard two people that update the blog once in a while, um, you might want to get more data about them, which might be links to their social profiles like Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, depending on your use case. Um, it also can provide you other information like what city they're in, what business they work for, things like that. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. It can also give you some really cool analytics tracking and reporting. So we know that social media has gone all in on the analytics side of things so that they can better power the advertising side, which is how they make money and how they stay profitable. So lots of different uh, tools have been created, especially from Facebook and Twitter recently, um, giving you all kinds of interesting insight through the ads platform and through the pages platform into who is visiting your social media pages. And then from there you can extrapolate who's then following through that through your content to get to your page. Uh, promotion, obviously, a lot of what we use social media for these days is paid promotion, or sometimes free promotion, but either you're promoting your clients, you're promoting your own services, whether it's building websites or hosting or whatever you do. Um, there's lots of different things to promote, but social media is a great way to promote, so especially if you're trying to get people to see your blog traffic, for example, or excuse me, your blog posts, you can use social media to drive traffic back to that blog. Uh, community. So you've probably heard all the buzzwords around community often these days. Zuckerberg's talked a bunch about how he's trying to make Facebook more of a place for community where there's uh, like real interaction and engagement going on. And so they've changed a lot of the platform, especially on the advertising side, to favor actual engagement from customers and giving people what they want to see. And that raises the relevance score, as they call it. So if you're looking to create or grow a community for whatever reason, whether that's a community of people who are into gardening or maybe it's a community of small business owners that you want to try and turn into warm leads that you can convert later on, the community is going to be a way that you can use social media to give people easy access into your site or to create a social network within your site to create a community. So lots of different things you can do there. And then lastly, ease of use. I added this one because... If you've got that customer that cannot, for the life of them, remember the password to the WordPress site, setting up something like social login so that they can log in using a Google account or a Facebook account may make that way easier for them. So using social media can make ease of use on your site a lot better too. It can also help users on the front end side if they're going to leave a comment, for example, using social login for things like that. So we'll talk about that some more later on. Um, any questions on why before we move on to the nitty gritty stuff? All right, so here's what basically how this is going to go. Right side is going to be the name of the plugin. You're going to see the first line will be a link, and that will tell you if that's a free plugin or if it's a paid plugin. And if you download the slides, those links are all clickable, so you can click through to either the WordPress depository or Code Canyon or whatever site it links to, and that will show you where that WordPress plugin is. 
Um, I'm not using any affiliate links. I'm not making any money off of you on this. This is just for your information. So these are all just links directly to whoever created the plugin. I'll also put a couple common features, highlights, some other stuff, and some blah. Um, and that's basically how this will work. So this, the slides should be pretty useful afterwards. I'm going to try and move through some of the boring stuff pretty quickly so that we can make sure we've got lots of time at the end for questions. Sound good? Sweet. All right, so let's start with social media sharing, one of the more obvious ones. You make a press on Word, you make a post on WordPress, and you want people to share that because they loved your content so much, right? So the easiest way to do that is to get them to share it on social media. So the first one's called Social Warfare. It's one of my favorites, mostly just because I love the name. Um, it's free, but there are also pro versions that add additional features and things like that. It adds social share buttons that just really just look good. Uh, it supports all of the major networks. Um, you can do multiple placement options, including floating options. Floating being as the person moves down the page, the buttons move down the page with them, which is kind of fun sometimes, but can also be annoying if done wrong. And it can put share counts. So if you want people to know how many times your stuff's been shared because you're doing it that well, then this is a good one for you. <clears throat> All right, next one's Monarch. So Monarch is actually part of a paid subscription to Elegant Themes, which I love. Um, I use their stuff all the time, especially for small budget websites, because when you subscribe to Elegant Themes, you get all their themes and you get several of their plugins too. It's one of those like kind of all-in-one deals. And they have like a lifetime subscription that's I think like 200 bucks or something. It's really not bad. And you get all their stuff forever as many times as you want to use it. So um, that's pretty good. And that also comes with Divi. They make Divi. So if you're using the Divi builder already and you want to get the pro version, buying their subscription is kind of a good way to go. But if you do that, you get Monarch. Um, that's another one of their plugins that provides social sharing for up to 35 different networks. And it gives you five different locations, so above and below post content. Uh, floating sidebar, so the little thing that comes in from the left side or the right side that's got the share buttons that stays on the middle of the screen no matter where they are on the page. Um, Pop-ups, flyings, and on images and videos. Easy social share. Uh, this is another paid one. I think that one's on Code Canyon. Uh, it's 20 bucks per site. Not bad, um, but there are free ones. So this one gives you 50 different social networks. So if you've got a customer that's in a really interesting niche and you need share access to some network you've never heard of that's exclusive to a region of Romania or something, maybe this is the one for you. Um, 28 different positions. I can't even think of that many different sites, places on a page to put an icon but they've got it, apparently. Uh, a bunch of templates and 25 different animations if you're into that kind of thing. All right, uh, any questions on that before we move on? Feel free to interrupt me because I'm supposed to slow down and take as long as possible since that other guy didn't show up. Yes, right here in the front first. Doesn't Jetpack have a lot of these features? Yes, Jetpack does too. I'm gonna talk about Jetpack a lot. Um, I love Jetpack, uh, shameless plug, my hosting provider, Pressable, I'm a partner for them. They're really fantastic, they're in the WordPress umbrella, and so if you sign up for Pressable, you also get Jetpack Premium for free for every site, which is really kind of nice. You also get Photon, which is their photos, or, uh, photo CDN. So um, you'll hear me reference Jetpack several times. I tried to include other ones as much as I could, so that's why I wasn't in that group, but I think I talk about it at least four other times in here because I'm a big Jetpack fan. Good question, though. Yes, sir. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, for the most part, they're all pretty much the same. It's some sort of share icon. The styling's a little different. Some of them are like the round icon. Some have squares. Some have different sets and features and things. But yeah, for the most part, within each group of this presentation, they'll be pretty similar. I'll try to highlight the biggest differences as best I can, though. Good question. Any others? Great. All right, so social media following. So. The social media sharing is like, okay, I made this piece of content, I want people to share it out to social media. This is now I want people to follow me on social because they might be more likely to see my content on social because they don't visit my site all the time. So if you're looking for more traffic, this is a good way to go. Um, this way, every time you create new content, you post it on social where those people are spending their time, they're more likely to see that and then they'll want to come back. So social media following can help again with driving traffic back to your blog or to your site or whatever content it is that you're publishing, if it's video or whatever. 
So Jetpack, this first reference. Um, <clears throat> Jetpack includes social icons. It's free, but there's also paid versions. Um, this is social media icon widget, multiple platforms available. It's easy to use and configure. It's pretty basic in its functionality. It's not super customizable, but it gets the job done, and it saves you from having to install one more plugin, which is another thing I love about Jetpack, is it being kind of a Swiss Army knife. Um, Helio Solutions social media buttons. And some of these names are a little ridiculous, but that's just how they put it in the WordPress repository. Uh, that one's free. Uh, it displays links to your social profiles on a floating bar, so if you want something that stays with the user as they move up and down the page, that's the floating. <clears throat> it can be on the left or right side of the page, 10 social media services, and it also has fields for your URL for the website and for email address. Social media widget. So this is another free one. Uh, dozens of platforms, four different icon packs, so that's four different styles of icons. Um, Four sizes, or you can also do a custom size, and then there's multiple different animations in that one as well. Questions on those? <coughs> All right, social media comments. So I mentioned earlier ease of use. So content comments are a good thing in, in a lot of situations because they can drive traffic to your site. They get people coming back and you know seeing that page more and more if they want to follow a conversation. And Google and the other search engines also take a look at that and see that interaction with your site and see that as new content. So it can help give you an SEO boost in some cases when done correctly. If people are posting a bunch of spam comments, that's obviously not ideal. Spam links on your site can hurt your SEO. It can actually lower your ranking. So it's important that if you are going to enable comments that you make sure those comments are somehow protected. Whether it's by login or by askament, which is another thing um, that WordPress makes. Um, it could be by CAPTCHA. Um, there's lots of different ways to do that, but if you are going to use comments, then make sure you have some sort of spam protection on that. Um, Discus is probably the most full-featured one uh, of the collection here. So Discus does a lot of really cool things, but it specializes in user content from all over the web. So one of the things that they can do is comments. They can do real-time comments. It adapts to your site's look and feel. It's responsive. And it also allows them to do rich media commenting. So, you know, the ever famous GIF, the memes, all of that stuff. If you want people to have the ability to put that stuff in comments, this is a good solution because it gives you that rich media ability. Mention number two, Jetpack. So Jetpack provides comment functionality as well. Um, this supports login from WordPress.com, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook. So if you want people just to have easy login access so that they can comment using their social pages, this is a good one. It's all the, you know, basically the major platforms. Uh, social comments. This is a free one. Uh, adds Google Plus and Facebook comments to your site. So if people are commenting actually on those platforms, it kind of embeds those into your site, which is kind of cool. Um, you can add Discus comments too. So if you're using the Discus platform, you can also plug those in. So you get a stream of basically one thread of comments that combines all three of those sources, which is interesting. Um, it displays comments typed either stacked or tabbed. Um, drag and drop display order in 14 different icon sets included with that one as well. Questions on comments? Doing good so far? Have I lost anybody? Am I going too fast? I see Ray Bush shaking her head yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, mention number three, Jetpack Publicize. Oh, sorry. So we're, now we're talking about broadcasting. So when I say broadcasting, what I'm talking about is when you create a new piece of content on your site and you want to send that piece of content to all the social platforms at once. Um, so, you know, auto posting or um, automation of that posting, that's broadcasting. So Jet Jetpack has Publicize, which is one of the features. Uh, again, free with pro versions. Multiple social platforms supported. You can also reshare your previously shared content. So if you're creating evergreen content for your blog and you want to go back through that stuff and reshare it again back to social, you can do that from right inside your site rather than having to go find that link and then go to all of the platforms and create a post again. So it's kind of nice if you're just kind of looking through your old blog post and you're like, oh, that one did really well because you're looking at an analytics tool that's built in maybe. You could just write from that tool hit the button, reshare it, schedule a post, type your text from inside WordPress, which is nice. You don't have to leave to go do that. 
Also works with custom post types, so if you're creating some sort of custom post for um, your client and you want to make sure that this will schedule those types as well, you can do that with this. Next Scripts is another one, free and pro versions of this one. Lots of different platforms supported on this one, so if you're looking for more than just the standard platforms, this is a good choice. The posts are 100% white label, which is great, so it doesn't say, you know, like in Facebook when you post from some tools, it says, you know, from Buffer, for example, things like that. This white labels it completely, so it won't say anything like that. Um, also, we'll do auto repost of existing, so same kind of deal like we just talked about. And it supports your URL shortener, so if you're using Bitly or if you're using um, Google or any of those other link shorteners, this will support that. Social Media Auto Publish, this is a free one in the WordPress repository. Um, you can attach a post or share a link to Facebook. You can also publish to Twitter or LinkedIn and or LinkedIn with an image. Um, so that's kind of nice because you can now use images on LinkedIn, which is great. Um, filter based on categories, you can filter based on custom post types. So if you only want to auto post a certain type uh, or a certain category from your blog, Maybe you've got four or five categories, but only one particular one you share your social pages, or you have multiple social pages for different categories. This could help with that. And you can also enable or disable WordPress page publishing from here too. All right, questions on that for you on the paywalls. All right, so social media content paywalls. So traditionally, when I talk about a paywall for content, it's asking you to subscribe or make a payment to my site to be able to view some sort of premium content. Um, there's a lot of consulting people and business coaches that do things like this where you get to their site and you get to read maybe a preview of something, but then you have to subscribe to get the full thing and they ask for payment information. The idea with a social paywall is the same kind of idea, but you're asking people for a payment by some sort of social action. So this could be sharing that post, this could be liking that post, this could be I don't know, sharing your page, it could be liking your page, there's all kinds of different social actions you could ask for here. But basically you're saying, I'm going to give you this really awesome piece of content in exchange for some sort of social proof, so to speak. Um, so there's a couple ways to do that. One press social locker is one that's pretty popular. It's again free with some pro versions. Three social buttons, any URL that you want to be liked, tweeted, or plus one on Google Plus. So not just the link to that post, but it could be any URL in general. It's got built-in advanced analytics and four different types of lockers on that as well. Uh, pop-up by Subsistic, I think is how you say that. So this one is a pop-up tool that creates all different types of pop-ups. Uh, it's free with pro versions. Um, but you can use these pop-ups as a content locker. So you can say anytime somebody comes to this page for the first time, show a pop-up, require them to do a thing, and then give them access to the content. Um, 18 different pop-up types. So if you're looking for other pop-ups on your site as well, this could serve multiple purposes. And it also gives you real-time statistics for analytics. So if you want to see how popular a piece of content is as you publish it, this is a good tool for that. Uh, LockerCat is another one. Um, LockerCat's made by a company that makes a couple of different interesting apps. Uh, this one particular one is free. Um, it's a Facebook share to unlock or a tweet to unlock, pay with a tweet as they say. Um, so basically saying share this post with all your friends and we'll let you get it for free. Uh, this one's very SEO friendly and it uses cookies to track returning users which is good. So if somebody comes back to your site and has already given us a like or has already tweeted to unlock. They have got the cookie in their browser at that point. The plugin knows that, so it won't ask them again, or some of these other plugins may ask more than once. Um, questions on that? Social content locks? All right, tracking is my next one here. So um, just a note on tracking before we jump into the plugins. Um, how many of you are using Google Analytics regularly on your sites. Okay, hands down. And this, some of this is just my own curiosity. How many of you are implementing that with Google Tag Manager? Ooh, one. Interesting. Does that, raise your hand if you know what Google Tag Manager is. All right, let me talk about that for a second because I think it's worth discussion. So Google Tag, you know, first of all, does everybody know what a tag is? Yes on tags, when I'm talking about an analytics tag? So an analytics tag is a piece of code you put into the site, usually in the head or some other place where um, it's JavaScript usually, and it is then doing some sort of tracking. Uh, 
examples of this like in Google Analytics, our Google Analytics, our page views, how far they scroll down the page, um, things like Hotjar do heat maps where you can see clicks, how often people are clicking on certain things on your site based on the color. Um, user stories is the, the most recent and creepiest one where you can actually see video replays of people's sessions on your site, cursor moving and everything. Um, so all of that is done using tags. It's a little piece of code you put in your site. The more of those pieces of code you put into your site, the more your site does what? Slows down, right? Because it's got to pull all these codes every time a page runs. So Google, being smart and understanding how the web works and where they want the web to go, has created this free tool for all of us to use where you put one piece of code into your site and then using the tag manager, you can then add as many tags as you want in their platform and it will update it automatically on your site. So if your customers are like mine and constantly change their minds about the things that they want, instead of you having to go in there and add code to every page of a 27 page site, you can now just go in your tag manager, say, okay, add this to the analytics, fire this on page view, show whatever, and save it, update it, check it on the site, as long as it fires, you're good. So if you've not exper experimented with this yet, I highly recommend you play around with it. There is a plugin called Google Tag Manager. I think it's GTM. And what I love about GTM is you just take the Tag Manager code and you plug it into the plugin one time and hit go, and it puts it on every page of your site automatically. So it has taken the process of implementing analytics code from what could be an hour or more of a developer's time, sometimes even more than that, depending on the side of the site, to 30 seconds, literally, of you know, installing two plugins, putting in the code, and hitting go. So, if you're not using that, I highly recommend that you do, and then you can add in things like Google Analytics, you can add in the pixel from Facebook, you can add in tags like Twitter metadata, um, there's all kinds of stuff that you can then add, including things like social media tracking. So, if you're not using that, highly recommend it. So, social media tracking, first one is Social Metrics Tracker, this is a free one. Um, it displays an analysis of social media interactions, so this is how much your content is getting out and about on social media. How many people are sharing this on each platform? How many people are interacting with it? You'll see view counts of your posts, so how much people are coming to your site and seeing that. And that's a dashboard panel called Social Metrics, so that's really nice because when you log into the site on that first kind of landing page that you see there, it adds a dashboard right there so you can see how your content's um, performing. So if your customers don't really know how to get into analytics and you want something that's easy for them to just see a dashboard where they say, oh wow, look at how good our blog post is doing. This is a good way to do that because if they can log into the site, the first thing that they'll see is this dashboard. Easy Social Metrics Pro. This is a paid one. Supports 12 different networks. Um, there's a dashboard that shows shares over a specified period of time. So you can see over 30 days, 60 days, 90, a year, whatever. Um, dashboard of shares over, oops, excuse me, three different reports. Um, basically, there's like a detailed report, there's a mid-level report, and then there's a high-level kind of executive report. Um, and it supports all post types, so pages, posts, custom posts, etc. Um, GAWP, Google Analytics Dashboard for WordPress, I believe is what that stands for. Um, they don't call it that anymore. I forget what they've changed the name to. It's something more longer and obnoxious. But um, basically, this is a cool one because it gives you real-time Google Analytics built in. Um, Google Analytics reports in your dashboard and allows you to easily track multiple events. So if you're using Google Analytics with your social and you want to get all of that in WordPress where you can see it in a dashboard, this is a free tool that just shows you your Google Analytics data right on your site. So if you're logging into your site a lot and you're not logging into Google Analytics a lot, but you do wonder about the site and you just forget to check on it, using this tool puts that right in your dashboard on the front page of your WordPress site. So it kind of puts it right there where you can't miss it. So it's kind of a nice tool just to show you what's going on and you can see what's popular on your site, what content people are engaging with, things like that. Social media logins. Any questions on those analytics? All right. Social media login. So I mentioned earlier ease of use. So if you've got customers that know how to use Facebook but can't for whatever reason remember their WordPress password and are constantly emailing you for help because they can't figure out how to use that forgot password button that's right below the link, um, maybe there's a better way. So set them up with a social media login. 
um, Facebook, Google, Twitter, whatever ones they're using, if, if they're on it and they've got access to that and they know how to use that, great. Meet them where they are, make it easy. <clears throat> Super socializer. This one does a whole bunch of different things, um, but one of the things that it does do is the social logins. It's free with paid add-ons. Um, it's GDPR compliant. Everybody know what GDPR is? All right, yeah, data protection laws that are coming from the UK. If anybody from overseas comes and looks at your website, you have to be GDPR compliant. So either start IP blocking every country except for the United States right now, or get yourself compliant. If you're not sure, ask. There's lots of people here who I'm sure could tell you a lot more about it than I could. Um, compatible with BuddyPress, BBPress, WooCommerce. Um, two of those we're going to talk about in a second. WooCommerce is the e-commerce platform for WordPress. Uh, it's multi-site compatible, so if you're using multi-site, this will work for that. Um, and also, you can embed this and use it on WooCommerce on the checkout page and on the customer login form. So um, that makes it really easy if you're doing sales. So if you're doing any sort of e-commerce, you want to create as few barriers to entry or barriers to conversion on that sale as possible, right? So if you uh, have them create a login and that login requires them to put in their name, their address, etc., 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 all these different things, but all they're going to buy from you is a digital download of maybe a PDF, you've made it really hard for them to buy that PDF because you're requiring all of this information. If you have to have it, so be it, but if it's just nice to have information, you may consider streamlining that process and doing something like a social login for a WooCommerce store. So if it's just simple checkouts, people are buying one or two small budget project, uh, small price items, let them log in with social. You'll get their name and email address, which is probably all that you need. Connect with payment, whatever one you want to use, and then they can check out. So it just makes it a little bit easier for the user so that they don't have to create one more login to it. Make sense? Okay, cool. Um, next end, social login. Same basic idea. This one's free, paid add-ons. Um, Facebook, Google, Twitter. One-click registration and login, so it's really simple, really easy. Current users can easily connect their accounts, so if you're running like a membership site and you've already got a boatload of users and you don't, are kind of worried about rocking the boat here, you can implement this without really fear of doing that because people can very easily connect their accounts for login and tie that into their existing account, even if it's with different email addresses. So that's kind of nice if you've already got a lot of users on your site. Um, social login, very creative name. Uh, this one's free, it's on the repository. 35 plus different social platforms, so that's a lot of different auth tokens, but somehow they managed to get them all in there. This one's also GDPR compliant, and it's seamless integration for old and new users, so same kind of idea as the other one. If you've got current users, and you want them to be able to use this, it makes it really easy for them to connect accounts. Questions on social logins? All right. Social media platform. All right, get to the end here. So we're gonna talk about two plugins here. I'm gonna spend a little bit of extra time on these because they're kind of special. So the first one is BB Press, and then we're gonna talk about Buddy Press. Has anybody heard of BB Press in here? You probably used it at some point uh, in your interaction with the web. So BB Press is the official WordPress open source project for forum software on WordPress. So your standard forum functionality with threaded comments that everybody knows and loves, that plugged into a WordPress site with a plugin. So it's free, uh, it's bbpress.org, and it is, like I said, it's a WordPress project, so it's under the umbrella of the WordPress Foundation. There's a whole separate team that works on that and develops for that. If you're not familiar, there's a ton of useful documentation on, on their website, so I definitely recommend you check that out. But if you are trying to, so this kind of goes back to the community thing now, so we're talking, if you're trying to get user engagement, you want people to have discussion on your site, or you're trying to create some sort of community where you want people to discuss and you want it to be in a format that they're very comfortable with, a lot of people, especially people who are my age or older, are very comfortable with forums. They grew up using forums. They've probably been on one or two before. Um, forums are they're just kind of intuitive. Like somebody makes a post and then people comment on that. And it gets threaded down. If you're commenting on a comment, kind of the Reddit style, you know, if you've used Reddit, that's basically forum functionality um, without the up and down voting. Um, but that's basically it. That's what this does. So simple setup and installation, customizable templates, spam protection, which is really important if you're doing forums. That's basically like a bajillion contact or comment forums. 
So if you've got those all over your site and there's no spam protection, that can get messy quickly, especially if you get attacked by a whole network of bots. Um, RSS feeds. One of the best parts about forums is you can subscribe via RSS. So if you've got people who frequent your forum and they want to know when somebody replies on a particular topic or replies in a particular forum, you can easily, from inside this tool, create the RSS feeds for them to subscribe to so that they get it in their email or their favorite RSS reader or what have you. Any questions on that? Does everybody understand what I mean by forum functionality? Cool. Some of the coolest implementations of BBPress that I've seen are when you combine it with the next one, which is BuddyPress. So BuddyPress is the full-on social network for WordPress, like literally whole entire social media platform in a box with one plugin. This one, just like BBPress, is another project of WordPress Foundation. So it's BuddyPress.org, it's under the WordPress umbrella, whole other separate development team working on that with lead devs and releases and the whole thing. Uh, if you go to their site, again, same awesome documentation, lots of great stuff on there on features, how to use it, how to implement it, how to configure it, how to customize it, how to extend it if you're a developer. Um, so awesome stuff in there. It is just as you would expect, everything you would expect out of a social platform, it does that. So you've got user profiles, which is kind of the basic one. The user signs up, they log into the site using the WordPress login system. They're stored in the user table, just like anybody else. Um, you can set up all different types of custom permissions for them based on what role they play in your site, whether they're admins or not. And you can create some interesting kind of mixes of permissions for different types of admins, which is a, a nice level of control if you have a lot of different types of people. Um, so they create their user profile, they can add rich media to that, they can link their site, all of that can get connected to Gravatar and pulling their picture if they want to, um, or they can just upload new photos. <clears throat> then you can create groups. So groups are just like groups on Facebook, for example. There's groups, there's public groups, there's private groups, there's like closed groups where you have to you know, request membership. Um, all the things that you would kind of expect for a group and then people can join that. So you can set groups up to be based on interest, based on occupation. I mean, it depends on the site. Um, so like one of these that I did was for like people who like to fish from kayaks. And so there were groups for different geographic areas of the country. There's also groups for different types of fishing, whether it's saltwater fishing, or if it's freshwater fishing, or if it's offshore fishing, or whatever. So groups can be anything depending on who your audience is. And then you've got activity streams. So this is what you would call the news feed in Facebook or on Twitter. Um, you can customize those as well. So if you want to show activity feeds for just a group, you can actually have a news feed for a group. Um, you can have a news feed for several groups. You can have a news feed for you know, just all the people that you follow uh, or all the groups that you follow. So you can create customizable news feeds, which is nice because Facebook gives you one and it's using their algorithm with what they think you want to see. So if you're creating your own social platform, you have the ability now to customize that, which is really cool because you can, in essence, create ultra, an unlimited number of feeds for people on whatever they will, excuse <coughs> me, whatever they want to see. It also has notifications. So when people subscribe to things, whether they follow a person, when they join a group, they can then get notifications the same way you would in Facebook with a little thing up in the top saying, hey, you've got a new post here, or somebody mentioned you here, or somebody commented on your thing there. All that stuff shows up in the notifications. So I mentioned earlier, BuddyPress combined with BBPress. So now, think of, you've got a group. People can join that group. They can interact with people in that group. They can talk. They can have general conversation. But then you can put a forum inside of a group. So that's where I mentioned the integration of BBPress and BuddyPress. So now within a social group that people have access to based on permission and role, you can then put a forum for people to have a discussion on specific group related topics. So if you have a need for that, that's a really cool implementation, which I've actually done before. It was kind of fun. Um, there are also some really cool themes available for this. So if you get into like Inforce, for example, and there's like the tags filters on the left side and you do BB press and buddy press, you'll see ones that support both, and a lot of those themes are already set up to do both really well and have all the page types necessary for that. 
So check those out. There's some cool stuff on there if you are just looking for examples. I think both sites, the bbpress.org and buddypress.org, also have a link to examples on their page as well. So if you just want to kind of see what that looks like to kind of wrap your head around it better, um, there's stuff on there. And you can just kind of search around the web too. There, most of that stuff's not too hard to find through Google search. Uh, any questions on those two? BB Press, Buddy Press, what they are, how they work, how they work together? Nope. All right. That's it. Any questions on any of that? Or any social media and WordPress questions in general, or social media. You know, like that's a hot topic these days. It's always changing. So, as someone who lives in that world every day, if you've got questions, I'm happy to answer. No, yes, ma'am. What are you taking the picture? So the question for if you couldn't hear, she's saying if you take a picture and you post that on WordPress or on social media, does it geotag that photo? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So what are you taking that picture with? Camera? Phone? Cell phone. Cell phone. If it's a cell phone, I'm willing to bet yes, it is geotagged, unless you have gone into the settings for your camera app and turned that off. 99.9 uh, .9 times it's turned on by default. Um, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to that, but if you don't want people knowing all of that interesting data about where you were, what altitude you were at, the temperature, or any of that other stuff that can get put in there, then you, <clears throat> excuse me, you should have the ability in the settings to turn that off. You can also, there's tools that will strip that uh, data out, so you can kind of plug a photo into it, it rips all that metadata out, and then gives you a clean one back. Um, as a best practice thing, I recommend that if you're putting it on the web, unless you're putting it on the web and you specifically want that data to be in there. Like, let's say, for example, you're a photographer that's going on to your portfolio and you want people to see your gear type, where you were, etc. Then I would say leave it in there. But otherwise, if it's, if it's a photo you took and you're putting it on a web to look like a stock photo or to, to play that role, strip out all that stuff because you don't want anybody to know where it came from. Good question, though. Yes, sir, in the back? Yes, sir, let me jump back to that. Yep, WP, beacon.agency slash WP social. And uh, you do it all caps or all lowercase, both of those should work. I think I set up redirects for both of them. That's a PDF, so you can download that. It should open in your browser, but just hover over the bar and click download. Yes, sir?
Yes. This is double check with the uh, social media login. Yep. Um, it's basically what would be basically to get back into like, the, the uh, what do you call it, again, the dashboard or to get yep. to the Yeah, so it's site. you can have like alternative login for your site using social credentials. So instead of them having to remember their username and password for WordPress, you can actually use an auth token from the platform. Small sites, not a lot of traffic. 
Yeah, so once you get the hosting figured out, then you can use tools like Pingo or you can use some like waterfall tools to figure out which things are running on your site the longest, what are the costing the delays. And then are you a developer or you're a designer or everything. obviously everything, jack of all trades. Yeah, so um, if you're not really super familiar with the hosting and the code side of things, you can get a developer to help you with this. Um, you know, I, I use my development team for this stuff all the time. We do a lot of work stuff on the site for people come to us with that exact question. We try everything, our site's still slow, can you help us? Usually that's the first thing we do, we move to a better hosting provider, which is usually they, they've done literally everything they can to the site, but the hosting provider is hard to do really matter. Um, so we usually start there and we do a full analysis on it, and there's many, many things that go into speeding it up, but it depends on the theme, it depends on the plugins, and really it just depends on what, what load times are the longest for what scripts and why. Um, you can also go kinds of things like combining your JavaScript and unifying that and combining your CSS to a single file, serving those files statically, you can add a content note, delivery network, TN, which will speed things up from a user perspective, you can add browser caching. Um, there's a lot of different things, so it's, I can do a whole other talk just on that. Other questions? Thank you. 